everybody, my name is Quicken and today I'm going to show you just how I put on my makeup for days that I am filming or making content for Instagram or if I'm going out with my friends. I have a full coverage hack kind of makeup routine and I would love to share it with you guys. It is something I have perfected over the last couple months and I really like how it shows up on camera, but I think it is also wearable as well. The contour isn't so obvious that you can't wear it out with your friends, but it is very flattering on camera. I have very dark under eye circles that I just feel like at an angle if I'm, you know, making a video for IGTV. I want them to be completely covered, but not cake face. So you guys actually requested this tutorial. I wore this makeup look on Tattoo Talk Tuesday, the video I put out on Tuesday, and it seemed like you guys were really into it. So I would love to share with you my tricks for perfecting this makeup look. It is super easy. It's something I can throw on right before I'm about to film. But like I said, it is also pretty wearable and buildable. So I'll teach you this base, this like glowy, healthy, but you can kind of still see my freckles base. Natural, that's the right word. And then from there on out, once you have the base, you can build on the eyeshadow look or minimize it. And I would love to share with you what I know. So hang out with me today, guys, and here we go. Hey guys, so before I start off any of my makeup, I actually am going to part out a section of my hair and just quickly wash it in the sink. I don't know about you guys, I have always done this. This is a hack my mom taught me when I was like five and we would use baby shampoo to wash our bangs because it's like oil free. So maybe no one does this, maybe everyone does this, but I section out this front part of my hair. This tends to get pretty oily and one, I don't want the oil like on my skin. Two, I feel like dry shampoo just like can't save this part of my hair. All of these pieces fall out of my ponytail anyway. So if they're wet while I'm doing my makeup, they kind of just slick back. And then if I use like a headband while they're drying, it'll usually give me a cowlick. <laughs> I was really gonna do this without a mirror. I'll just use my viewfinder for everything, said a crazy person. So this has been my go-to makeup look for like filming or like going out with friends for the last couple months. I'm starting off with this Murad Hydration. And this kind of like is a setting spray and a primer. That's how I've been using it. I really like it. It smells so good. It just smells amazing. So this makeup look, I'm happy to share with you guys because I feel like I've finally figured out something that really works for my face shape. And if you guys like it, that means that I might be right. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is use a little bit of primer. I use this NYX primer. And excuse me, I just cut my nails short for the first time in like years. I always love how short nails look on Instagram. I'm just pushing this primer in my face nice to touch our face and remember what we look like. This is Pro Concealer from LA Girl and this is in the shade yellow. And this is just going to cancel out the darkness of my under eyes. My skin is pretty transparent and you can just see that vein right there. If I have any blemishes that I've been like picking at, then I'll use this as well. I started breaking out here for the first time in my life. Here and here. And since it's like on the side of my face, I like nervously pick at it, but it's completely unconscious. Like I don't know I'm doing it because I've never broken out there before. Then I just use like a little stubby brush and just kind of like put that where I want it. I, I do this so that the yellow isn't on my beauty blender. And I think it, kind of melts really nice. Then if there's anything left on your brush, you can kind of just like lightly put it wherever. Just hitting any spots that I messed up on my face. Next with my um, Real Technique sponge, 
I'm going to be using NYX BB Cream in the shade Nude. You guys might know if you've ever been here for any of my other beauty videos. This has been my go-to foundation or base for years, like years and years. And I still really like it. For me, it's like a true match and it's not a lot of coverage. You can still see some freckles through it, which is why I like to color correct first. Don't always want full, full coverage. In this makeup routine though, I do put a lot of stuff on my face. So I feel like this gives me a chance to still almost look natural and not totally beat. That could just be a theory though. So I'll cover the yellow with this as well. The Beauty Blender is cold and it feels so good. I don't have central air and it is getting really hot. I have like a fan in the window situation, but you guys would be able to hear it. Rant, there's so much construction happening on my block. It's ridiculous. Like I feel like it's illegal to have like three active construction sites on one city block. John is like, I wanna move. And he's talked about a neighborhood he wants to move to. And I was like, listen, if we're not moving to Japan, I'm not going. Once that's all tapped in for me, um, that's when I go to my next step, which is LA Girl Concealer. And this is in the shade Porcelain. Might be the lightest shade, might be the second lightest shade. This is where the technique kind of pops off. So these little LA Girl concealers have a brush tip. I'll kind of squeeze so there's some product and you can see it like enter the tip there. We're not wasting anything. <laughs> Sorry, that got on my hand. So I will take this brush tip normally, ignore that. And I will trace my nose to make it really tiny. And then from there, I'll like feather it out. So it also conceals my under eye. If I were to give you a trick, it would be just to keep them even on both sides. And wherever you put the concealer is going to be the lightest part of your face. And if you do this better with a brush, I totally recommend this. I do like the brush tip on here though. So just tracing it to give yourself the smallest nose possible or the smallest nose you want. And then with your beauty blender, I'll go in and I get in this corner and just put pressure and like Put it, just like, put that product there. It's all like pushing it and then bouncing up. I'm not like smearing it in. Whatever is left on my beauty blender, that's when I'll like kind of highlight, like kind of hit my nose a little bit and drag that up the bridge lightly. And then, you know, some lightness on my forehead and on my cupid's bow. There's plenty of product on the beauty blender, so after I put half a bottle on my under eye, generally the beauty blender is saturated. So this will create the illusion that our nose is tighter. You can't quite see it yet, but this creates a light base for the next step. However, I will say, and I tend to mess this up even though I'm giving you this heat of warning. I put so much lightness on my under eye that sometimes my blush competes with it and I get this like wore sunglasses and got a sunburn and then took my sunglasses off look. So we want to avoid that. The next step after this is to take our contour palette. So this is the Guys Face FX palette. This is an indie brand that I've been using since November and I really, really like them. Not sponsored, but I do attribute like this new kind of makeup strategy that I've learned to the ease of using this palette. So this is a cruelty-free palette. This palette is in the lightest shade and they have different shades. There's also directions on the back, but I really just had to play with this palette for a while and it looks like this. This was my like replacement for the Shade and Light Kat Von D palette, but I honestly have gotten more out of this than Shade and Light. I just think that this is more user-friendly or like the results are more blatant so you can like see what you're doing. So to avoid the sunglasses thing, I take this little brush like this that's kind of tapered and it's long 
and I go in with this first shade and this is our highlight shade but I use it for my under eye and you want to stay close to where you are putting this on your under eye to illuminate but also not to create a base that your blush won't stick to. Then you're gonna highlight your nose as well. It's really easy to just be like blip 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 blip. But if you go too far down, the blush won't sit on top. looks a little flawless, right? The next thing I do is I take this fluffy brush. This is a BH Cosmetic fluffy brush and it's just kind of tapered, but it's pretty wild, it's pretty big. And I'll go in with this second shade, which is listed as a contour shade. The next shade over is bronzer. I've never really used it, <laughs> but I do contour. So I go in here and kind of like butt press and just like find an area that is like my cheek area and just like kind of hit it in circles. And whatever's left on my brush, I take up to my forehead and then drag under here. So the next thing I do is I'll take a fan brush and I'll go in again with the contour and I will hit my nose right where that white like concealer line we drew ended. And this is with a pretty light hand. Sometimes when I feel like I need a little more definition, like this makeup's kind of all out. I'll go in with like a fluffy, this is like a Jaclyn Hill, it's supposed to be for your eyes. But I'll go in really, really lightly and just give that a little more definition. And you can clean it up with the white if you need to. And that's my new nose. <laughs> the fan brush is nice for beginners or going fast or just like pretty light coverage. And this also has a highlight shade, but I will use blush first. So this is an ombre brush blush by NYX. Um, it actually gives my face kind of like some texture that I don't like, but I'm using it. So I'll go in, this is kind of like a an more angular brush. This is from BH Cosmetics. And I go up kind of high, like here. That's my face shape, that's what works for me and my aesthetic. But you can see because I go up so high that I kind of hit that concealer. The illusion that I am trying to make personally is that my cheeks are up higher and I don't have that like purple vein, which kind of no matter what you still see right there. And this is just a clean face, face brush. Back to the highlighter from the Guys palette. This is just another fan brush. Hitting that highlighter and putting it right here at the top of whatever cheek you may naturally have or one you just created with blush. Or one that you're using to hide your vein. So this is the Dermablend Professional banana powder and this baby can turn you to no blush central really quickly so I use a little less of this than I used to although I really do like the product and I actually am like old school I like like the sponge so I'll get product on my sponge and kind of just put it like I just like put it where it needs to be Just like pat it in. 
almost in like little circular motions or else you'll be able to see it. Whatever's like on my brush still, I'll kind of hit my under eye. Like this is at an angle a little bit. Cause this is really strong stuff. You'll have a hard time like putting eyeshadow over this. My hack though, is if you get those like super white under eyes and your blush ends up being like down here is to at the end, put some cream blush, like where you just need to add definition. And the cream blush will usually prevail. So this is the part of my process for my Canadians out there. We're all hit it with some more bread. Our face is locked in and that's <coughs> how I create the like dewy, full under eye coverage, chill, bronzy cheeks look. Moving on to eyebrows, some days I want to do my eyebrows and some days I just don't. I keep meaning to film a like my five minutes makeup video because that's where I get pretty experimental with what I want my brows to look like. But I would say for the last few beauty tutorials I've had on my channel, I just use this wet and wild eyebrow brush. I am fully up to date with all the wet and wild controversy. I do like this, which is a shame. So this is an angled tip and I will just follow my natural brow, filling in the underside, giving a lot of strength to the underside, and then the hairs just like live on top. I did just practice some brow maintenance like two nights ago, so my brows are looking pretty clean. I don't have to pull any tricks out of my sleeve. If you haven't seen my like brow maintenance video, I talk about like how I trim them and shape them. And that's been pretty good for me. One piece of advice I could give you though, when you're doing your brows is to move your head around. Unless you're just taking a picture and washing your makeup off, you're gonna want your brows to look good at every angle. So blend them. And if my brows are too harsh in the middle with light fingers, I'll just like, almost just like blend that makeup. And I think that looks a lot better. And this is just some NYX brow gel to lock and load them. But my final step on my brows is with a felt tip brow pen. If I'm missing any hairs along here, I just add them. It's usually just one or two. Sometimes I'll make this freckle in the corner of my eye darker. And the one on my lip a little darker. Please recommend any felt tip brow product in the comments. I'm dying. NYX doesn't make this anymore. Holding on for dear life. Next, I have a meeting uh, on Skype. So I'm going to do that right now and come back. I thought I would be more along in this process, but it took me like 25 minutes to set up the fan in my window and I can't even have it on. I'm sweating. I'm sweaty. Okay, now that I have had time to sweat. So my eyeshadow is actually just a depotted naked Too Faced palette. I think that's what they're still called. And what I do, you've probably seen me doing this in my videos. I'm kind of just tapping that makeup into my nose crease because it sweats right here and I don't want it to disappear. Putting it right back where it came from. So going into my naked palette, this white shade, I'm just going to take that all over the lid and up to the brow bone. Oh, I forgot to mention I put on lipstick so I didn't look super crazy a minute ago. Then there is a light like taupe and I'm just going to go into that with a like tapered fluffy brush. I know this is pretty fluffy for what I am using it for, but I just want to put color down and also get color in there. And the bristles are soft enough that they really don't make like a harsh line. I mean right there, but <laughs> that's all me, girl. Next, to just give us a little depth. I'm going in here with the same brush with just the littlest like, excuse me, just the little, the littlest, pardon me, you're stepping on my jacket. 
I know I have a lot of lid space and I don't do anything with it and I'm very sorry. So in this Naked Too Faced, there's like a champagne pop, Jaclyn Hill-esque kind of shadow and I'll hit my brow bone with it. Wow. And if I'm feeling super feisty, look at that, that's instant. Next is mascara. I'm gonna do that off camera, finish off the look. I'm gonna use a little bit of lip stain. Right in the middle. Maybe a little bit of this in the center. Oh yeah. So these photos are the final results of my makeup tutorial. These photos are untouched. They were taken with a ring light. I love the results. I feel like I don't have to do a ton of editing. The makeup is really easily captured on camera and on film, as you can see. And I just think that it really works out. <laughs> and I really do enjoy the results. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today while I film. And if you like videos like this, if you want videos like this, speak up. Um, if you learned something today, don't forget to share this video. It really helps the channel grow and I love that. So hit subscribe if it is your first time here and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye guys.